happenings in the skies over Phoenix. Hello out there everybody. Manny here at Area 503. And I hope you all have been well since our last video. July 2nd marks World UFO Day 2019. And let me be the first to wish you a happy UFO day. All around the world, people in different countries and of different races and religions will celebrate the UFO phenomenon. But why on July 2nd? It's because most people believe that's the day that a UFO crashed outside of Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, kicking off a global interest in UFO phenomenon that lasts to this day. And so in honor of UFO Day 2019, I would just like to talk with you all today about the Roswell UFO incident of 1947. I can think of no other single UFO incident that has influenced the UFO community like the Roswell UFO incident has. So what exactly happened? Let's try to find out. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found sometime last week has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico and sent to Wright Field, Ohio for further inspection. A local Roswell newspaper ran this article with the headline, Roswell Army Airfield Captures Flying Saucer on Ranch in Roswell Region. No details of the flying disc are revealed. The article states that the intelligence officer for the 509th Bombardment Group, Major Marcel, stated that the field had come into possession of a flying saucer after a local rancher reported the object on his property. Major Marcel recovered the disc along with the detail from his department. Now, believe it or not, this is about as far as we can go into the Roswell story and still have most everybody agree. Pretty much everyone accepts that something crashed in the Roswell desert and Marcel and his group went out to recover it. But from here on out, the waters get really muddy and you have to pick and choose and use your critical thinking to determine who to believe. On July 9th, the day after the crash was reported, the government officially changed their story and said that this was a crashed weather balloon. They furnished photographs of officers who reclaimed wreckage from the alleged balloon. Meanwhile, Major Marcel reportedly had the wreckage sent to Wright Field. In 1994, an investigation launched by the Government Accountability Office initiated by a congressman from New Mexico named Stephen Schiff would produce the following document, dated the same day. I'll talk more about the GAO report later, but for now let's look at this document that was dated July 8, 1947. It appears to be a communication from a field agent of the FBI to the director and the special agent in charge of Cincinnati about information concerning a flying disc. In the memo, the agent advises that someone from the 8th Air Force advised them, quote, that an object purporting to be a flying disc was recovered near Roswell, New Mexico this date. The disc is hexagonal in shape and suspended from a balloon by cable, end quote. The agent further advises that the object found resembles a high-altitude weather balloon with a radar reflector, and that the disc and balloon were being transported to Wright Field by special plane for examination. The agent then goes on to state that the reason this information was being passed to the FBI was because of the so-called national interest in the case and the fact that the news media was going to be breaking the story that day. In closing, the agent states that no further investigation is being conducted. Now, to me, this memo really seems significant because it shows an internal communication from a member of somebody in the 8th Air Force to the FBI reporting the recovery of a crashed weather balloon with a radar reflector. And keep in mind, this was July 8th, the day that the media reported that the flying saucer had been recovered. 
and it was the following day, July 9th, when the media reported that it was not a flying saucer, it was a weather balloon. The Air Forces would go a long way to back this story up. Here is a picture of Major Marcel holding alleged wreckage from the Roswell crash. And here is a picture of Brigadier General Roger Ramey of the 8th Air Force holding some of the wreckage as well. Here are some pictures of the Army demonstrating weather balloons being launched. Strangely, in the media over the next few days, weather balloons had been sighted, crashed, and recovered in some strange locations, one as far away as New York. It all seems so believable. They're not UFOs, they're weather balloons. The only problem is, the whole thing was a lie. It was staged. It was a fraud. You wanna know why? In 1994, the government quietly released a statement saying that the crashed wreckage at Roswell was not, in fact, a weather balloon. But now, they are claiming that it was part of a top-secret test program called Project Mogul. That's right. All of the show of the high-ranking military officers holding up wreckage, looking amused and confused, was staged. It was fake. Project Mogul was another program that was allegedly in operation in 1947. The government claims that it's a balloon experiment to detect and monitor the Soviet Union's atomic weapons testing. But I personally feel like Project Mogul is just another cover story. In fact, this whole thing reminds me of a friend of mine named Chunk. Listen, okay? You guys will never believe me. The most amazing thing I ever saw. More amazing than the time Michael Jackson came over to your house to use the bathroom. Okay, Brand. Michael Jackson didn't come over to my house to use the bathroom. But his sister did. It's like they got caught in a lie, so they told a different lie, instead of just telling the truth. But something that really stands out to me is that you have somebody from the 8th Air Force knowingly lying to the FBI. I mean, I understand lying to the public if it was a secret radar test program, but why lie to the FBI? From what little I know about Director Hoover of the FBI, he was not a man to lie to. So why take the chance? This just seems like some extraordinary measures to go through for what should have been an expected occurrence. I mean, if you're testing a top secret balloon system, wouldn't you have a procedure in place to retrieve a downed test model? It just seems like common sense. We'll talk more about Project Mogul later, but for now let's move on. It is widely believed that not only did a UFO come down near Roswell, New Mexico on that day in 1947, but also that alien bodies were recovered. Stan Friedman spent his life researching Roswell as well as many other topics. He had this to say on the subject. I understand about, I've only got about a minute or so left, so we've looked at this for so many years. Are we yes. any closer to actually unraveling this, making sense of it, and finding out what the real truth is? Well, there's no question that the real truth is that the United States Army Air Force recovered a crash flying saucer, recovered alien bodies, and it's covered them up very successfully. Stan's viewpoint is shared by many, myself included. To further back up this theory, let's take a look at a Dateline piece from 1994 featuring a retired colonel named Philip Corso. The UFO believers tell a story that goes something like this. Not only did an alien spaceship crash into this arroyo here in the desert, but the bodies of several, no one can agree on how many, extraterrestrials were pulled from the wreckage, driven across the desert to this Hangar 84, then loaded onto planes and flown east for secret autopsies. The bodies and the wreckage remain hidden, the deep government secret in history. Among the believers is this man, Philip Corso, a highly decorated Army Lieutenant Colonel who until his retirement was a senior staff officer at the Pentagon, for 21 years privy to this nation's most sensitive secret. He has come forward now to say aliens crashed at Roswell. In his book, The Day After Roswell, he claims, in fact, that alien technology changed all our lives. Hello. 
Corso's story begins just days after the alleged crash. July 1947, then Major Corso was stationed at Fort Riley, Kansas. He saw, he says, an extraordinary shipment headed for Washington from Roswell, which he described for us when we visited the Roswell UFO Museum and Research Center. They were not caskets, but they were boxes of, and oh, let's say they were about six feet long, about three or four feet wide, and they were covered with tarps. So when I went in, I went in with a sergeant, and he picked up one corner of the tarp, and there's this body floating with some sort of liquid. A body? Yeah, a body. A complete body, not the head only. Complete body. What kind of a body? It was like that thing there. You're serious? Yeah. Simple face, not much to it. Little holes in the eyes. It looked different and it was small. It was dead? Dead, dead. It was floating some sort of liquid. Where did they go? I don't know. I never got into that. Corso says he never mentioned his close encounter with alien bodies when he was on General MacArthur's staff in the Korean War, or when he was military advisor to President Eisenhower, or even when he was a commander of a nuclear missile battalion in Germany during the Cold War. You commanded nuclear warheads. I had atomic warheads. You know, this was not trivial stuff. You're a colonel in the U.S. Army uh, with uh, access to the most secure secrets of the United States I, government. I had all the clearances above top secret. I had the satellite clearance, eyes only at the White House. I had the crypto clearances. I had all those clearances. One time I And you believe in flying saucers? I have to believe it. And as we'll see, that glimpse of the aliens was only the start of Colonel Corso's involvement with the great Roswell alien cover-up. Corso says that in 1961, he was posted to the Pentagon to the Office of Foreign Technology with one of the most secret assignments in history, custody of the actual Roswell UFO wreckage. And the book says Corso was ordered by his superiors to share the alien secrets with military contractors. We planted the seed, and then we see how the progress was going. And those seeds, Corso claims to have sowed, yielded an operator's manual for the millennium. An incredible array of inventions, all, he says, reverse engineered by American corporations from alien technology. Well, let's go through a list. Here's a very simple version of uh, fiber optic. The first time you saw fiber optic... It was in a little bundle. ...in that flying saucer debris. Yeah. Stealth technology. Some of it came from aliens. Some of it came from aliens. Some, some and this flew in the Gulf War. Yes. But now, perhaps the most important, these little Walkman radios, computers, everything that we have, the, the heart of it is one of these. As far as I'm concerned, the most important thing that we did was the greatest circuit. You saw it the first time. Size of a quarter, black. From the flying one, saucer one debris. Charge. I have about four or five of them. So all this technology came from aliens? We called it applied engineering. What we meant by that was give this information to a industry that wants it and encourage them to take credit for it and take the patents. Why, but the aliens would love to have the patents. Well, maybe the aliens have lawyers. I don't know. So we talked to representatives of the companies cited in Colonel Corso's book. They hold the patents on things like Kevlar, fiber optics, lasers, night vision scopes, and integrated circuits. All items Corso maintains came from alien technology. It's a who's who of American industry. But Monsanto, DuPont, Hughes Aircraft, Bell Labs, and Dow Chemical all said they had never heard of Colonel Corso or the Roswell wreckage. Dow Chemical did expand its statement to say, quote, although we're not entirely certain, we strongly suspect that all of the men and women Dow scientists responsible for our inventions over the years hail from the planet Earth. And Bell Labs claimed that its technology, too, is, quote, grounded in the creativity and hard work of very talented Earthlings. Corso says the companies weren't supposed to know where their inventions came from. They were purposely misled. It was all part of the plan. So, the Colonel claims to have not only seen UFOs, but also alien bodies recovered from the Roswell wreckage and transported somewhere unknown for further study. Furthermore, the Colonel claims to have later been a part of a top secret program to disseminate technology from the alien craft to leaders of American industry, who of course denied his story. The theory that an alien craft was recovered at Roswell 
is further supported by Bob Lazar's story. Bob has been a popular figure in the UFO culture lately, and I'm not going to talk about him too much here. However, in the 1980s, Bob Lazar came forward as a whistleblower on a top secret government program to back engineer an alien propulsion system from a UFO. One of the statements made by Bob was that the origins of the UFO seemed to have an archaeological type of feel to them, or a recovered nature. Bob was recently a guest on The Joe Rogan Experience. I will link to the full interview below, and if you get a chance, go check it out. It's a really great interview. But if the military had these craft in storage for 40 or 50 years, they may very well have an old feel to them. In fact, one of the statements Bob made on the Joe Rogan interview was that he felt like this program would run for a few years and then be shut down once it reached a technology cap to allow science and technology to catch up with the program. And then they would start it back up again for a few years. And it's quite likely that the UFOs that Bob worked on were not the actual Roswell UFO. But this does give some credibility to the theory that the American government did have advanced technology, as is evidenced by the almost magical advancements in the U.S. military hardware post-1947. We can only speculate about what happened at Roswell. The only people who know for sure are the US government, and they're not talking. And when they do talk, they have zero credibility, as they've been caught in multiple lies. Remember that FBI teletype that we spoke about earlier? That document was the result of a 1993 investigation by Congressman Stephen Schiff, launched into the Roswell UFO incident on behalf of his constituents, the residents of the state of New Mexico. Congressman Schiff requested that the Pentagon provide him with all documentation related to the Roswell UFO incident. The way that I understand the story, the congressman was given the runaround by multiple government agencies being bounced from one archive office to another, all of them claiming to have no records pertaining to Roswell. Congressman Schiff accurately identified the brick wall he was running into, and so he approached the Government Accountability Office and asked for assistance. The GAO was able to get some answers out of the various agencies about Roswell. Let's take a look at what they came up with. In the first part of the report, the GAO outlines the Roswell UFO incident. They acknowledge that the debate continues as to what really happened at Roswell. The GAO then states, quote, We conducted an extensive search for government records related to the crash near Roswell. We examined a wide range of classified and unclassified documents dating from July 1947 through the 1950s. End quote. Remember this part. It'll be important later. We then find out that in 1947, the Air Force required that Air Accidents Report be maintained indefinitely. We also learned that there was no Air Accident Report filed for the crash at Roswell, presumably because there was no requirement at the time to prepare a report on the crash of a weather balloon. Now this next part is extremely suspicious to me. Quote, In our search for records concerning the Roswell crash, we learned that some government records covering Roswell Army airfield activities had been destroyed, while others had not. For example, RAAF administrative records from March 1945 through December 1949 and RAAF outgoing messages from October 1946 through December 1949 were destroyed. The document disposition form does not indicate what organization or person destroyed the records or when or under what authority the records were destroyed. Now just let that sink in for a moment. The administrative and outgoing communication records were destroyed. Nobody knows why, nobody knows by whom, nobody knows when, and nobody knows who gave the order to destroy them. 
With no administrative records, there is no way to track down any potential living witnesses, nor could you confirm the story of such a witness even if they did surface. And with no outbound communication records, we have no way of confirming exactly what the RAAF actually reported the day they became involved in the Roswell UFO crash. And here's something else that seems odd to me about this. Even if all of the outbound communication records were destroyed at the Roswell Army Airfield, those outbound communications had to arrive somewhere, and there should be a record of those. And yet, the Pentagon claimed that they could find no record of those communications either. That means this is not just an isolated incident with some records being transferred from Roswell somewhere else. Somebody went to great lengths to cover up what actually happened there. Remember earlier when I said that the GAO performed an extensive search of classified and declassified documents for information relating to the Roswell UFO case? That search produced exactly two documents. One was the FBI teletype that we discussed earlier, and I'm not surprised that that document would survive the Roswell information purge. The teletype documented a verbal communication between an unknown source at the DOD and the FBI. It's easy to see why that kind of thing could just slip through the cracks and get filed away and forgotten. The second document was from the 509th History, which is essentially a log or diary kept for the unit. A brief section in this diary reads, Quote, the Office of Information was kept quite busy during the month answering inquiries on the flying disc which was reported to be in possession of the 509th. The object turned out to be a radar tracking balloon. End quote. These two documents are all that remain of the truth about what really happened at Roswell. What a shame. And on behalf of all of the children of America, I wish to apologize to the world for the sins of our fathers. But if it makes you feel any better, they lied to us too. After Schiff's repeated requests, the Pentagon finally released a close to 1,000 page document titled The Roswell Report, Fact versus Fiction in the New Mexico Desert. This is a massive report and I have only scratched the surface of it. But from what I understand, the report basically says that the Roswell UFO incident was due to a crashed test balloon of the Project Mogul. Project Mogul was a top secret government program designed to monitor the Soviet Union's atomic weapons testing program. In the report, they further discredit the UFO theory. There's even a sworn statement by Sheraton Cavett, who was stationed at the Roswell Army Airfield in 1947. In his statement, Cavett claims, quote, I had occasion to accompany one of my subordinates, Master Sergeant Bill Rickett, counterintelligence, and Major Jesse Marcel, intelligence officer of the 509th Bomb Group, to a ranch land area outside of Roswell to help recover some material. End quote. Mr. Cabot then states that when they got to the location, they located small bits of debris which appeared to resemble bamboo type square sticks, one quarter to one half inch square, that were very light, as well as some sort of reflective material that was also very light. The area of debris was very small, about 20 foot square, and the material was spread out on the ground. He then states, quote, I remember recognizing this material as being consistent with the weather balloon. We gathered up some of this material which would easily fit into one vehicle. There certainly wasn't a lot of this material." End quote. In the end, he goes on to refute many statements people have made over the years about him or attributing to him. And he closes by saying, quote, My bottom line is that this whole incident was no big deal and it certainly didn't involve anything extraterrestrial. End quote. So the government, after all these years, has finally furnished an alleged real-life witness to the Roswell incident. And they finally declassified records of the Project Mogul that they claim is what crashed at Roswell. And it all sounds so perfect, just like when they claimed it was a weather balloon that crashed. But something just doesn't seem right to me. 
First, in his initial interview transcripts, Cavett says that he doesn't recall if Major Marcel went with him or not. Then, in his sworn statement, Cavett seems to miraculously recall that Marcel definitely was there. This makes me feel like his testimony may have been coached. Secondly, Cavett has stated that he recalls reflective material and bamboo-like sticks. This is consistent with the photographic evidence. However, there is no way that this debris is from a Project Mogul balloon. The material in the photographs and the material that Cavett describes both could only be a weather balloon like these. However, look at the scale diagram of a Project Mogul balloon train. Project Mogul balloon trains have no wood or bamboo. They have no metallic foil. They are a long train of balloons tethered by a cable. The length of the train is hundreds of feet long or roughly the size of the Washington Monument. These things are huge. Does this look like something that would fit easily into the back of a Jeep? I don't think so. In its own report, the government releases a witness statement that contradicts its own findings. And so either Cavett is telling the truth and there is no way that they recovered a Project Mogul balloon, or Cavett is lying and what they recovered was a Project Mogul balloon. It's a shame for us that the records from the RAAF were destroyed illegally so we cannot confirm or deny any of this. The U.S. government has had several opportunities to come clean about what really happened at Roswell and they have lied each and every time. So I personally doubt I will ever believe what they are saying on the subject again. Okay, Brad, Michael Jackson didn't come over to my house. He's a bachelor. But his sister did. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Anyhow, there hasn't been much progress into the Roswell incident since the 90s. Except for the whole Bill Clinton, Dr. Stephen Greer incident, which is detailed in Unacknowledged. And that's a great film if you want to know about that situation. Go ahead and check it out. And that wraps up everything I have on the Roswell UFO incident. I'm sure we'll come back to Roswell later. But for now, let me wish you all a happy World UFO Day 2019. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503. And I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth.